Okay. Now here I will talk about the love of God, which is very important in our relationship with God and in our ministry. The whole life, the key is to build on the love of God. The reason is, many people, their spiritual life is built on what I have to do, the law. I have to read the Bible. I have to pray. I have to do this, do that. When it's built on that, then they will have pressure. They, they always think, I have to do this, I have to do that. I'm not good enough. Uh, how can I do better? And then what happens is with time, they can have too much pressure and they might lose the motivation. But with the love of God, it will give us constant uh, motivation. So from different areas, we can see the love of God. Five areas that I name, and you might see more areas. The first area is God's love in nature. From the food He created, He did not just create food, He created delicious food so we can enjoy. And all different kinds of food, like even each one kind of, like uh, apples. You can see different kinds of apples. So God created different kinds of apples and different kinds of fruits and fish and shrimps and crabs and all these different kinds of food. And then this is from nature. And also nature includes our body. It's so wonderful. Our body is so useful. We can see clearly. We can hear and we can enjoy music. We can breathe and we can smell. We can eat. We can talk. And also even we can kiss. That's using our mouth. And, and you know, the whole body, the brain, the mind is so wonderful that we can think and we can remember and have feelings, have impressions, all this is all very wonderful. Now, if we lose any of this, it would be difficult. For instance, some people, they lose the ability to feel. They don't have feelings anymore. You talk with them, no feeling. They're not happy. And they cannot be happy. They, uh, they will not be able to cry because the feelings is blocked off. And then you see there's something wrong. It's hard to communicate with someone like that. It's hard to, uh, you know, have connection with a person like that. And this person is like a person who has some mental problem even, you know. So we can appreciate God's creation, His nature, uh, it, you know, the showing God's love in the creation and His wisdom. And also the next would be Jesus' uh, redemption, that Jesus did not have to come to die for us. Because we have sinned, we deserve eternal punishment. But God did not want that to happen. He loves us so much, He sent His Son. And on the cross, the greatest suffering of Jesus is not the nail, it's not the death. It's the separation from God. So Jesus cried out in pain, My God, my God, where, uh, why have you forsaken me? That He was in pain because He had this constant relationship with God. Now for people, we don't have this uh, uh, contrast. But now for you, you have experienced this joy and peace and love of God. And so now you begin to taste the presence of God. And then if you suddenly go back to your original condition, you say, wow, there's a difference. But for Jesus, the intimacy is even deeper, stronger than that. So when he had this close relationship and suddenly he doesn't have it, and it's even punished by God, then it's, you know, a very you know, a big contrast and also facing the, you know, the heaviest punishment on earth, the curse of God actually fell upon Jesus. That's what Galatians said. That, so that was great suffering so that he, we can be saved, you know. So his redemption and, uh, and also he continued to work in our lives. And then third, God's love as shown in the Bible. The Bible has told us many incidents how God loves his people and God, how Jesus loved the people around him so so we can read the Bible and find out that and also we can experience God's love when we pray to God when we worship him when we love him we can experience his peace and love so that came from his love and then also how he helped us in our daily life sometimes we're in trouble we ask God to help us and then God helps us so these five areas we can look at we can think about every day do you remember these five areas? Nature, yeah. second, 
Jesus redemption is salvation and third the Bible and then when we come close to him when we worship him or praise him then his love will come and also in our daily life when we ask for help now so when we the more we think about it the more we'll see God's love and there are many Bible verses that uh, talk about God's love so I'm going to talk about some of this and think about the whole aspect of God's love for instance the, the Bible passage that, that uh, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost that's Luke 19:10. for the Son of Man came to seek and to say what was lost, who was lost. Now, from this verse, now many people just look at this verse and say, well, yes, Jesus saved me, thank you. But they didn't think of the deep love behind them. Let me ask you to think about the process you were saved. Now, it might not be just going to church. Maybe you go to church since childhood, or maybe you were brought to Jesus later. But sometimes people go to church from childhood, but it doesn't mean they're changed. Mm -hmm. So how we were saved, how we were changed, that instance, what happened? God, now for me, God used many different people to help me. God used different situations. God worked in my heart so I can have, have thoughts. Actually, it starts from childhood that I have thoughts about God. And, and then I read a science book that talked about uh, this scientist said that uh, there's wonderful design in this world and it came from God so when I all this prepared for me and the final instance was very wonderful I, I'm not going to spend time talking about that so in your process of being safe did you notice how God worked in your life yeah was it wonderful yeah yes so that shows God's love and and how he changed our life to repent turn away from our sin and then after we're saved he continued to work in our lives and many times we rejected it we sin we rejected the moving of the Holy Spirit and we continue to sin but God doesn't give up he continue to move in our heart now that is great love now imagine you have a friend and you uh, and, and you try to uh, uh, talk with the friend or you try to go out with the friend and the friend said no I don't want to go out with you and next time you say that again and then you say I have a new friend I don't want you to be my friend now if he said that to you a few times do you still have the motivation to seek him very hard right yeah. but many people have said that to God many times and even complain God you didn't love me you didn't help me you 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 don't care about me so all this, God never did. did not take those things seriously. If He did, He would have forsaken us and punished us a long time ago, but He did not. So when you think about how many times we have sinned and He continued to work in our lives, then we say, God, you really loves me. love me. When you have this, really have this faith, God is loving me all the time, God is with me all the time, that really help us to have a close relationship with God. And I use this passage to support what I just said. Um, Isaiah 49 verses 15 to 16, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. So here, so here it talks about, so here it talks about that the mother will not forget the baby. Uh, her baby and, and God will not forget us either that God will continue morning. yeah morning uh, get a chair please so God will continue to care about us and remember us even when we reject him so that is great love of God it's you know if you meet someone you know or maybe your mother you know, because usually the mother is the one who loves us most in this world, usually. And if you have rejected your mother or hurt your mother in different times, and then she still continues to love you, and then if you think about it, and one day when you become a father, and then 
you think, wow, my mother has continued to love me even when I rejected her, and now when I'm rejected by my child, and I understand how hurtful that, that would be. And then you understand the love of your mother. So when we think about how you know, people love us so much, and then we think about God, He loves us more than anyone else. So I hope you will continue to spend more time thinking about His love. Every time we experience something from God, or just anything, I always think about you know, everything, actually everything is in God's control. You know, there are two times my eyes could have been blinded. One time, I was a child, I was playing with my brother, and he was holding a pair of scissors. And then I fell to him, and then the scissors just hit my nose. And it was dangerous. I could have been blinded since childhood. And then at that time, there was a, uh, a branch, and it had spines on it. And then the branch, I was, you know, walking through the, the plants, and then the the branch bounced in my eye and it just hit the side of my eye. And if it hit in my eye, I would have been blinded also. And then all this, I know it's God's protection. And then when I think about it, I say, God, you're so wonderful. You think about me all the time. You, you're with me all the time. You care about me all the time. And another verse I really like is one, Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139, verse 5. You are in front of me and behind me. I'm paraphrasing it. And you are laying your hand upon me. Here it talks about God is with us all the time. Now, how do we know that God is with us all the time? Now, we can see that before we were saved, God already prepared the way for us to be saved. So He's already working in our lives. And then after we're saved, when we're lazy, He's still, or reject Him, He still continues working on us. So when we don't come to Him, he still come to us. And then when we come to Him, He always come to us. He will bless us. He will give us strength. So what we can see is before we're saved, He comes to us. After we're saved, when we reject Him, He still bless us. And, and then when we uh, uh, pray to Him, He always for sure bless us. So then we see that God is always blessing us and He's always with us all the time. So you think about that. You know, if you compare uh, now you probably heard of slaves uh, you know like the black slaves that were taken to America and then you know these slaves when the master say come the master cannot say I, I'm working on something else they have to stop immediately and then come immediately uh, or even I use a, a funny situation the slave is in the washroom <laughs> and the master call him <laughs> He has to quickly finish and rush out. He cannot say, I don't want you. I have to wait uh, for a few more minutes. He cannot do that. Now, but let me ask you, is God our slave? He's not. But He is with us all the time. Even a slave would not do that. And when I think about that, I say, Lord, who am I? I'm not worthy of your love. And you continue to love me so much. And I really appreciate Him. Now, when we live in the love of God like that, always counting how God loves us, first it gives us faith. God cares about us. God cares about everyone we minister to. God wants to bless everyone. And God will give me strength to help them, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit to help them, so I don't have to worry about anything. The first thing, I have faith in Him. The second thing, I will be comforted all the time. God loves me, so I have strength, and I have motivation to come close to Him anytime because I know for sure God will come to me. So when I pray, I will pray like this. Oh Lord, I know you're right here. I start like this. I don't start with, oh Lord, come to me. I will start with, Lord, you're right here, so wonderful. You're always loving me. <laughs> you're with me all the time. Now, I hope you have this faith. If you have this faith, your relationship with God will never be weak. And you always have strength, and you know for sure that what you do, God is pleased, God is happy, God will reward you, and your whole life, your future, your work, your ministry, your wife, whoever it is, God has a plan already.
If you follow God totally, you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, this, this promise is not easy to make. Now, we can, I cannot make a promise to someone. If you listen to me all the time, for sure you, your whole life will be blessed. I cannot make that promise because I have no ability to make it happen. But God can make it happen. You seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now, kingdom of God means first, we want more people saved. Second, it means wherever God is the king, there is His kingdom in our heart. If I let God be my king, He take over my life, He's the master of my life, then His kingdom is in my heart. Now, many Christians, they don't have the kingdom of God fully living in the heart. They, because they, they want to follow the world. They want to follow money. They want to chase after girls. So that way, it's not, God is not the king. Many Christians, you talk about, well, uh, Christians should not date a non-Christian. They say, yes, yes, yes. But the moment they see a beautiful girl, or handsome guy, they forget about all the teachings. It's because in the heart, God is not number one. And also, why, why don't they put God in number one in the heart? Because they just don't think God is so good. They think, this girl is so beautiful. She's in front of me. If I get her, that's the best thing in my whole life. But what God prepares for us is better than anything else. So do we believe that? That God is in control of the best thing in the world. If you follow God, He will give you the best. That way, you will have the motivation to follow God and have confidence. You know, I tell you, I, I'm blessed in every single way in my life. Every, every single way. <laughs> my first wife passed away in 2008 and I thought I would just be, um, I would stay single and just take a luggage and go to different places to be a missionary. But God prepares for me a wife very wonderful that she has, she is very supportive. She is, she has a lot of wisdom. She can give me suggestions because uh, not too many people can analyze what I do and then give me good suggestions. And she can give me suggestions and she's supportive and helpful to me in every way. And God can prepare that for you too. If you follow God, don't, don't rush to any girl. Let God guide you. Even if someone likes you, if a girl chases after you, you say, Let's find out from God <laughs> if this is God's will because God's will is the most important. This is my wife. Yeah. So she's she's always supportive, and we talk to each other many times a day. You know, I talked to her this morning before I came, and uh, it's we can have a every area of my life. You know, for instance. Uh, every time I ask my co-worker, you know, uh, uh, to do something, immediately she take out her eyeglasses. Uh, even to uh, take care of these cameras, she has to take out her eyeglasses so she can see the control. But for me, I don't need eyeglasses to even read small letters, and I thank God for that. Everything I give glory to God, and that way I'm relaxed, I'm happy. I have confidence, I know God's plan for me. For instance, when I came to Israel here, I want to bless, I want to bring blessings to different areas. And, uh, and sometimes, sometimes people say no. Now, for some people, they'll, they'll be angry, unhappy. But for me, it doesn't matter. God has a wonderful plan somewhere else. God will open the door. So I have confidence in every area of my life God has a plan. That way, uh, I do, I'm not affected by people easily because I know God's plan cannot be changed by people. And I enjoy God's presence, I enjoy coming to God, and I enjoy serving God, and I have confidence to serve God, and I know God is happy with what I do. All I need to do is just repent of my sins and say, Lord, help me. I want to follow you. I want to obey you, I want to love you, I want to have a close relationship with you, and I know that those things, God for sure is happy. And I know for sure, and He'll bless me. Now if I fail anyway, I will say, God, God please forgive me. 
if I, I don't know if I've sinned in some way, then I ask God, please let me know and then forgive the sins that I don't know. And, and, and so I have full confidence to come to God. And so for you, I hope you will believe that you are a prince in the kingdom of God. You have high position. Now, if today there are princes and kings, and then a prince or princess come into this room, you know, dress up like a prince or princess, you would say, wow, this person is honorable. But we are like that too. We are honorable. We have a high position. Your future will become brighter and brighter and higher and higher. So I hope with the love of God, you have confidence, and then you will say, to come close to God is the best thing that can happen to me, to pray to God, to obey God, to read the Bible, and to uh, serve Him. It's the best thing that will happen to me, and then my whole life will be full of blessings. Now, this is the best motivation to give people. Let me tell you, contrast. Many people motivate people like this. Have you read the Bible? Have you prayed? If you haven't, you have to pray. You have to repent. If you don't repent, God will punish you. Now, that is motivation by the law. And then, people will say, I have to do this, do this, I have to do that. I haven't done well. And then people would lose, you know, they would lose faith and then they would sometimes lose motivation. So I hope you would continue to have this continued motivation for your whole lifetime. And to believe that your life can become, you know, greater and greater. But it takes time to build up. It takes time to build up. You need to learn. You need to have a close relationship with God. That's the most important thing. The second is to learn. The most important thing is a close relationship with God and to understand God more from the Bible. And then to learn. You have to learn from the Bible school. You have to learn uh, from other people how to serve. But the most important thing, the key, the foundation is the love of God for us. And for me, when I try to bring healing to people, deliverance, drive out demons, always I start with the love of God. I say, God loves you, your life is precious. You come to the presence of God, come to the love of God. He has a wonderful plan in your life and He will bless you. So if you have confidence in that, you know, you come to God all the time, then God will heal you and, and set, uh, drive out the demons. God will bless your whole life and your life will go higher and higher. So, Whatever I do, I motivate people to serve God. I always start with the love of God. Uh, I uh, bring someone to Jesus, I start with the love of God. God cares about you. God wants to bless you. Uh, for myself, every day, when I wake up, first thing I say, thank God you're loving me. Hallelujah. <laughs> first thing I do, when I wake up, I always say, thank God you love me. That, that for the whole day time, I would think of God's love for me. That, um, that gives me continual motivation and continual positive thinking, positive emotions, and it takes away all the hurt feelings and from the past. Okay, so that's the first thing that to have this love of God. And then the second thing, so I talk about different foundations, very important. The second foundation is the Word of God. Because the Word of God has a lot of promises in it. And then, uh, now many people read the Bible. They read the Bible, they know the Bible stories. But it doesn't mean that they are motivated by God's word all the time. When we read, we need to find out the nature of God and His love in the verses. When we find that out, then we see God's love and His grace. Then we will love the word of God more. In many passages, now the Bible does have passages of the law, but the Bible first start with the grace. For instance, the Israelites. You know, I am God who has delivered you from Israel, uh, from Egypt. So first he delivered them from Egypt. So, and then he gave them the Ten Commandments. And then many times you see, the Israelites turn away from God, but God continued to draw them to him. So he continued to bless them. So this here is showing God's love to motivate them. And then the New Testament Christians, Jesus always tell them how you know I came to seek you. Uh, so when we read these passages, think about the nature of God. Now this I call glorifying God's nature 
Bible study and glorifying God's nature uh, way of preaching. Uh, let me use an illustration. The woman who has uh, 12 years bleeding and then uh, she was healed when she touched Jesus. And then Jesus said, who touched me? And then people said, everyone is touching you. How come you said who touched you? And then Jesus said, someone must have touched me because energy has come out from me. And then this woman admitted. But instead of rebuking her, he said, daughter, take heart. Your faith has healed you. So Jesus called in a very tender, intimate way, daughter, take heart, or means relax. It's okay, relax. So Jesus has this heart of comforting people. So the nature of God, so every passage we read, we think about the nature of God. The nature of God there is His is love, His acceptance of people, His gentle, His kind, he, he wants to build up relationship with people. He treasure the relationship with people. And He treasure each person. So from many passages in the Bible, uh, for instance, Romans 8, it talks about nothing can separate us from the love of God. That means the love of God is sticking to us. So you hold on to that. That means God's love is everlasting and it doesn't go away from us. It is not affected by other things. So, so we know that God's love is not like other people's love. Even, you know, the greatest love on earth is the love of the parents. But even parents, when the children disobey them, they will lose the strong love. They still love the children, but they will not love as much. And very often, because of the sins of the parents too, uh, they would have partiality. They would love this child more and love the, uh, and don't love the other child. Sometimes even dislike some child and but God is not like that God loves everyone if, no matter how weak we are how sinful we are so when you read the Bible every passage you think about God's nature behind them now let me name some of God's nature and his grace so in the future when you read the Bible you can look for this first his nature of love patience his humility now, why do I say God is humble? Because now He's most high God. People always think of Him. He's most high. So we should humble ourselves. But God Himself humbled Himself first because Jesus Christ humbled Himself to the lowest level because He died a most terrible death on earth. And then He, uh, and then He, in a humble way, came to bless us. When we reject Him, He continued to bless us. So all this came from His love. And then, uh, how, so uh, when we, you know, we can see how Jesus was willing to help uh, his disciples and willing to help us even when we reject him, all this is his humility. And also, God is wise. That's in the nature. He's wise. His plan is the best. His plan is without fault. If we follow him totally, our whole life will follow a best plan. And, uh, also, his sense of beauty, the creation of the whole world. You know, the Bible verses just talk about the beauty of the Lord, that is full of the beauty of God in this whole world. And his, um, the way how he can make the best of the situation, even when we ruin a situation. So he can make the best of the situation. And he can make the Foolish people become wise. He can change people's nature. And what you experience these few days, He changed your nature. He has the ability to change people. So all this came from His wonderful nature and His wonderful grace. So I hope the more you look at things, the more you think. For instance, we have clothing because of cotton. God has the wisdom to create the cotton plants. And then people see the cotton plant and then they uh, weave it into threads and then make clothing and other material to make clothing. All this came from the wisdom of God. Everything I see, I see the good nature of God. So, so when you read the Bible, every passage. Now, there are some passages that talk more about the, 
the nature of God. But there are passages that talk about different things, but we can still look for God's nature there. For instance, the Bible says, do not give a foothold to the devil. Now this passage did not talk about God's nature. Then you think of the opposite. Do not give a foothold to the devil. That means before that, actually God has a plan in your life. God has blessing for our life. But if we sin, we give a foothold to the devil. So first, God loved us. God has a wonderful plan. God saved us. God gave us eternal life. So God has all this. But Satan came to steal and destroy and to kill. So he came to take away those things. So the good nature, God's nature behind that is God has given me blessings first. So don't let Satan steal those blessings from you. Don't let Satan, Satan destroy your life. Let, uh, let God's blessing stay in our whole life that we can enjoy Him. So every passage, uh, now we can see good, uh, God's nature. Now even His holiness is His uh, wonderful nature. Uh, sometimes people don't like to talk about holiness or they think just talk about the love of God. But actually, uh, it's very important that we talk about the holiness of God because God's holiness is very beautiful. In heaven, one day when we go there, then in heaven, in heaven there, uh, uh, you can pull a chair here and come and listen to me. So, when you go to heaven, there are Christians on earth maybe that don't treat you so well. But one day when you go to heaven, you find that they really are happy to see you. And you might be surprised. Oh, you're so nice to me now. In the past, you were not like that. So in heaven, they don't have the sinful nature anymore. They will have full holiness of God and the love of God. They don't have sin anymore. So that's beautiful. And if our whole life is like that, it's like in heaven, holiness. Our whole life, you know, if our family is full of holiness, it's very wonderful. But very often people don't follow the total holiness of God. I want to follow the total holiness of God in my whole life so that there is no, I don't give Satan a foothold. Now how to keep holiness? This is another teaching. How to, how to take care of our sins. And God has given me a, a simple way. The five steps to victory. Remember that? I think I talked about that uh, uh, one time, but I want to hear talk about how to keep the holiness of our life. First, aware. We might have a sinful thought. And then second, destructive. It is destructive. Third, apply biblical principles. You, you heard me talk about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Apply biblical principles. So if I dislike someone, someone is not nice to me, and then I dislike the person. I'm aware, I dislike him. And then it's destructive because it would destroy my spiritual life. It would destroy my peace. So biblical principle, overcome wickedness with goodness. And then pray. And then I choose to obey. And I find that it's possible to take care of problems right when it happens in our mind. That will take care of that right away. That way, then we can um, immediately turn away from any sin. Or lust, when we see a beautiful woman, immediately we're aware. It's destructive. And the great biblical principle is honor each person, not with lust, and then pray. And then, okay. now we, when we serve God, we have to look at beautiful woman, woman, and sometimes even sexy woman, but we want to look at them as people, not as a sexy object. And then be able to care about them and love them. So, so that's how we can take care of any kind of lust or any negative thinking, now, there are all kinds of sins in different areas. So this is something we need to take care of, uh, learn to be aware, like any pride. Now, when I pray for people, I've seen many people experience the Holy Spirit. And a number of times, I feel very happy in a sense, oh, uh, that uh, I have the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, that way I become proud. And I remember the Word of God, that God reminds me, Pride is destructive. Uh, remember the word of God. Do not, glory do not belong to us. Glory belongs to the Lord. And 
uh, the, for the proud person, they are you know that uh, the way is the way to destruction. So, so then I pray, and then I choose to say, this is God's work, God's glory. It's not my work, and I thank God for that. 